Let's take a look now at the P-series. Again, up to this point, we have learned the geometric series, the nth term test, and the integral test. We're about to talk about the P-series, but you should continue to update this as we learn new strategies. A P-series is a series that's in the form of 1 over n to the pth power, where if you'll notice, the base is the one that is changing. So quite often we'll have a series where the exponent is changing. In this case, it's the base is changing. The base is n. The exponent is constant. So the exponent is remaining the same. Now this p-series test, or just p-series, says if we know that p is greater than 1, the series will converge. And if 0 is less than p is less than or equal to 1, or p is between 0 and 1, with the 1 being inclusive, then the series diverges. So before I use the p-series test, which is super duper easy on this case, let's think about what if I didn't know the p-series test? How would I go about this particular question? Well, another way we could go about it is to use the integral test. And the integral test says you have to check, is this positive? Is this continuous? And is this decreasing for x is greater than or equal to 1? So is it positive? Remember, we're looking at f of x being that function of 1 over x to the 1 half. So if x is greater than or equal to 1, is this value always going to be positive? Yes, it is. Is it always going to be continuous? Well, for x is greater than or equal to 1, it sure is, because 0 is not included. Is it decreasing? OK, well, this one I have to do a little bit of work. I have to find f prime of x. So if f of x is x to the negative 1 half, f prime of x is negative 1 half x to the negative 3 halves, which is always going to be less than 0 because it's negative. And so therefore, yes, it meets all of these conditions. Now, if I were actually doing this with the integral test, I would give a little bit more information about why it's positive, continuous, and decreasing. But because I'm just trying to get through that part quickly, I've determined, yes, the integral test can be used. And the integral test says, hey, take the integral from 1 to infinity of x to the negative 1 half dx. If I integrate x to the negative 1 half dx, I get 2x to the 1 half. And 2x to the 1 half from 1 to infinity would be starting by plugging in infinity. So 2 times infinity to the 1 half minus 2 times 1 to the 1 half, which is 1. Well, if I think about the square root of infinity, it's still infinity. I'm taking infinity, the square root of it, which is still going to be an increasingly large number. So this is actually infinity. And I know that if I get infinity, this says it diverges. Now, why did I go through all of that work? Just to show you that there's more than one way to determine convergence or divergence of a series. And you should work to find the one that's easiest. Because if I wasn't specifically asked to use the integral test, I would go straight to the p-series and say, hey, this is a p-series where I have the p-value of 1 half. So if p is 1 half, then using a p-series, I can say that 0 is less than p, is less than or equal to 1, so this diverges by the p-series test, or by the p-series, because it's not a test, it's just a series. So I can do just this part and be done, or I can do all of the other using the integral test. So I'm going to choose the easy way because I am very lazy and want to just get done as quickly as I can. Let's take a look at three examples. Again, this is a very easy test. It should be. Remember what we're looking for is if the p-value 
is greater than one, then it converges. And if it's between zero and one inclusive, it diverges. So all I have to do for each of these examples is determine what is P. So in this case, remember I'm thinking about P, well, let's think about this differently. This is the summation as n goes from one to infinity of one over n to the one third. Now that I've written it that way, it's clear that P is equal to one third. Since P is between, whoops, is between zero and one, this diverges by P series. Whereas my second example, if I rewrite this, is the summation from one to infinity. Remember, this is n to the first, and this is n to the one half, so I can rewrite this as one over n to the three halves, because when I multiply, I add exponents. So that means that p is equal to three halves. Since p, three halves is greater than one, this converges by the p-series. Or another way to write this is this is a convergent p-series with p is equal to three halves, which is greater than one. The last example is again n to the negative one-third, so if I'm thinking about this as from one to infinity of one over n to the 1.03, that's positive, so I'm writing it as the denominator now and getting rid of that negative. Now I can say that p is greater than one because p is equal to 1.03, so this is a convergent P series with P equal 1.03, which is greater than one. In our next section, we're going to take a look at comparing functions. So the first comparison is the direct comparison test, but we'll also take a look at comparison of limits.